Hello and welcome to the Reviews Brothers. Ninjas are cool, they have been since forever. The sneaky little bastards have made their way into every type of media there is, which thankfully has made for some pretty good video games, and of course some not so great ones. In this video we're going to be taking a look at a random bunch of games featuring ninjas to see which ones are worth your time. You'll notice that there's a distinct lack of shinobi games here, and that's because he's on my list of videos to make so he'll get his own one at some point. Now, how about I shut the hell up, you press that subscribe button, and we take a look at some games. We are going to start with The Ninja for the Sega Master System. This, quite surprisingly, is a vertical scrolling shooter. You play as The Ninja and you make your way up the screen, or sometimes diagonally, as you fight off hordes of evil ninjas by throwing your ninja stars at them. That's a lot of ninjaring. The game is a very early Master System game and it looks kind of basic. The game is bright and colourful, but you can count all the frames of animation on one hand. But the controls are tight and responsive, and they need to be, as even with good control, this game is hard as ninja balls. You've got two attack buttons, one of them fires straight ahead, and the other one fires in whatever direction you're facing. Enemies mostly come at you from the top of the screen, but occasionally they'll appear out of nowhere, and it's one hit and you are dead. And if you do die, it's back to the start of the level you go, which is a real pain in the ass. Though, having said that, the levels are actually pretty damn short and only last a couple of minutes if you manage to survive. There's also not too many of them, so I guess they had to compensate for that. The levels are also pretty basic, with just a few obstacles in the way, and as mentioned, the enemies will just attack you pretty much all the time, but you move pretty slowly so it can be very hard to avoid their attacks. Something that is a bit of a shame is that the boss is basically the same for every level, though the attack he does does change each time you see him, so you do have to be on your toes, especially as you'll almost always get immediately hit after he appears, at least I did. Now, really, that's all there is to the game. It's very simple, and it's actually based on another game. It's one of those games that is fine, but nothing special. It's hard, but beatable. Once you've had a bit of practice, you'll be able to play through it in about 10 to 15 minutes when you've learned what to do. So yeah, if you like this kind of game, give it a go, it's kind of fun. Hey, remember two minutes ago when I said the ninja was based on another game? Well, this is that game, it's called Ninja Princess. This is basically the same game, but for the SG-1000, the precursor to the Master System, so we won't need to look at it for too long. It basically plays identically, but the graphics are worse and the sound effects are more annoying, and there aren't as many on-screen enemies, but it still managed to keep the one-hit deaths and is still very, very difficult. I've got no idea why they felt the need to change the character from a ninja princess to a regular ninja, but I'm sure it was worth it. The levels here are slightly different, and really, I'd say it's just about as fun to play as the other one, so if you do like that game and can handle the more primitive graphics, then you'll probably enjoy this one too. The controls are decent, it looks okay, and it is actually kind of fun to play. Handheld action now with Ninja Boy on the Game Boy. This is a top-down action game where you are indeed a ninja boy. Your mission is to go around punching people because you're a ninja. But it's not just people you hate, as you also have to punch any of those bastard rocks that you see. These will contain items like ninja stars and sometimes even concealed staircases. These staircases take you to bonus levels which are timed and you just need to punch all the things to get points and if you're lucky, maybe an extra life. At some point after punching a bunch of rocks, a large door will open at the top of the level and this will let you enter it so the level can be finished. Then you move on to the next stage and repeat the process. And that is pretty much the whole game. It's actually pretty damn easy, though it does get trickier in the upper levels, of which there are only about 7 or 8, so it won't take you long to beat this one. The levels are packed with enemies, and most of them do just take one hit to defeat, but then again, so do you, so watch out. Also, your attack here is actually quite annoying to use, as you just sort of slide forward when you attack, and the hit detection is pretty poor, and I avoided attacking anyone from above or below, as I never felt like I'd connect. Also, thanks to the view, it can be tricky to get the right angle, though this isn't as bad as it first seems. 
The graphics here are fine, if a little basic. The enemies change up quite regularly, which is nice, though basically they are just a palette swap of the same two or three enemy types. You'll also need to contend with some platform action. Jumping in the game is a little awkward. You can run and jump, which works fine, but the best thing to do is to stand still and jump, and then press the direction you want to go, as for some reason this makes you go twice as far, and makes it much easier to make big gaps. But be careful, as you can't attack or control yourself when you jump, so if there's an enemy in the way, you'll be a dead ninja. It's a good thing that the game is short, as it does start to get quite repetitive quite quickly, though to be honest it was actually kind of fun, even though it does have a few problems with its gameplay. This isn't a particularly great game, but it's fun for what it is and it won't take up too much of your time. Sticking with the handhelds, here is Ninja Gaiden on the Atari Lynx, and I think this is the first Lynx game I've covered. Lucky me. As you may well know, Ninja Gaiden it started off as a beat-em-up in the arcades before it was made into the classic 2D action game for the NES. The Lynx game here is more of a port of the arcade, and sees you running through the streets fighting thugs and bosses, kind of like Streets of Rage, but nowhere near as good. This is the Lynx after all. The graphics here are very pixelated and the animation is pretty terrible. You have the standard jump and attack buttons to do your usual combos, but man, the animation is so choppy and slow that everything just feels really bad. Couple that with the dumb enemies, which includes pretty easy bosses, and this is just a bit of a chore to play. It doesn't put up too much of a challenge until you get to the parts where you have to jump and climb on obstacles, which for some reason I could very rarely get to work. I tried every combination of button and I just couldn't jump onto the high platforms above me, and to progress you need to get through a lot of bottomless pits, so I had to deliberately kill myself and hope that I just respawned on the ledge that I couldn't jump onto, and this actually did work a couple of times. Now I'm sure there is a proper way to do this, but even using the normal high jump wasn't enough. To round off the poor graphics and gameplay, the music and sound is also very dull and basic, with some really simple melodies that could just be thrown together in a couple of minutes, and the sound effects are just dull thuds and some awful electric noises every now and then. I really didn't enjoy playing this one, and I don't think you will either. Even my Elgato seems to hate it, as I recorded about an hour's worth of footage, but that corrupted, so now I only have three minutes. Thanks a lot. But really what you're seeing here is basically the whole game. This isn't a good game, so ignore it. Next up is Ninja Cop, also known as Ninja 5 for the Game Boy Advance, and this one is from Konami, and it's freaking cool. This is more like it. You are, indeed, a Ninja Cop, and you've got a few missions to take on, all of which involve exploring a large area, fighting bad guys, rescuing hostages, and swinging around like a badass. It's kind of like Shinobi on steroids. You have to stop a bank heist, a hostile harbour takeover, and terrorists from hijacking an airport. Each of these levels plays kind of the same, with bad guys all over the place for you to take out with your ninja stars or sword. Enemies will drop power-ups that make you stronger, which is indicated by your clothes changing colour and the level indicator at the bottom of the screen. Of course, the higher your level, the more damage your weapons do, and they even upgrade to get things like a spread fireball. But be careful, as if you take a hit, you drop a level, but it is quite easy to gain your level up again. A big part of this game is your ninja grappling hook, which you use with the L button. You need to use this to grapple your way around the levels, swinging kind of like Spider-Man and getting to hard to reach places. This can take a while to get used to, and even later on in the game it still kind of feels difficult, but once you do get used to it, it is very satisfying. Enemies will sometimes have hostages that you'll need to rescue, these need to be timed correctly so you don't accidentally kill the hostage, and of course if too many die, then it's game over. Each level has a few stages within it, and you'll need to find coloured keys to open all the rooms and rescue everyone. Once that's done, you can move on to the next stage, and there's a huge end of level boss on each one too. These have the classic thing of forcing you to learn their patterns so you can take them out. Each boss took me a good few tries before I was able to beat them, but I always wanted to keep trying as they were a lot of fun, and you know you can do it. The graphics here are good, but they're nothing really too spectacular. The stages are all quite similar too, which is a bit of a shame. The controls are very good, but your character does move kind of strange like a ninja crab, so this can take a bit of getting used to. 
and also you have to wait for the smooth animations to finish before doing anything, but don't get me wrong, it still feels great to play. It is tough though. There aren't many stages here, but you won't be beating any of them on your first try. There's loads of hazards and tricky platforming sections to get through, and the enemies, while not too bright, can be tough and you only take a few hits before you die. Overall though, this is a really great game and I highly recommend adding it to your collection. Over to the NES now for Ninja Crusaders from Sammy. This is a 2D action game where you are, you'll never believe it, a ninja crusader and it's your job to save the world that's been overrun with evil robots and hideous monsters. Your character controls well, moving fast with some cool weapons at your disposal. You start with an endless supply of ninja stars and throughout the levels you'll find chain whips, swords and bow staffs. Each of these weapons has a different range and power and you'll soon find which one suits you best. For me it was the chain whip which is pretty powerful and travels most of the screen. The levels are also teeming with enemies, all of which kill you in just one hit, which is probably the thing I like the least about this game, as it really could have done with giving you a life bar, or at least one extra hit, especially as the bosses are pretty tough and you don't get a chance to learn their patterns when you first fight them, but then again you don't in the Contra games, no one complains about that. Also, when you die, you do go back to the start of the level, which is always annoying. You can, however, get a few lives to help you out, as if you collect the same icon for the weapon you already have, it gives you an extra life, so there is an incentive to stick with just one weapon. However, there are times where you might be better off with a longer range or power. It's actually a quite cool trade-off that makes you really consider the pickups that you find. What's also cool, and pretty damn random, is that if you hold down the attack button for a few seconds, you actually transform into an animal, which is different depending on the weapon that you have. These animal forms are pretty powerful and they control well, but they often have downsides. For example, the scorpion isn't very good at jumping, the bird form is great for skipping areas of the level but you can't attack while you're like it, and the cheetah, well actually the cheetah's pretty damn good. You can transform back and forth whenever you like by holding the attack button, but it does take a few seconds, leaving you open to attack, so again, you've got to be really careful when you do it, and I do actually recommend not bothering to transform when you fight the bosses. The graphics here are alright, but nothing too special. There's a wide variety of enemies which is nice, and the levels are your standard fare of cities, jungles, oceans and crazy fireplaces. This game was actually a hell of a lot better than I thought it was going to be, and actually kind of plays it a lot like Contra. It's not quite on that level, but still well worth playing I'd say. If ninjas from Earth are too boring for you, then you need to check out Zen Intergalactic Ninja, also for the NES from Konami. Here you play as Zen, he's an intergalactic ninja, and you travel across a handful of varied levels, each with their own unique gimmick, in order to save the world from some evil pollution bad guys. This is an odd one, as it really feels sort of like an edutainment title in terms of plot, but the gameplay is actually really good. One level has you running through a factory after setting a damn bomb. The factory is making evil robots, so you've got to blow it to bits. This is all done in an isometric view, and it looks really good. The controls here are also very good and responsive, though thanks to the view, some of the platform sections can be a pain, and if you die, you tend to get sent back pretty far, though there are a couple of checkpoints. Another level has you climbing a tree to fight an evil woman who makes acid rain. At the same time, you've got to attack plants with your magic stick so they don't die. So you have to keep switching from fighting the boss to healing the plants. It's pretty cool. And then you're wall jumping between some buildings to rescue a bloke, putting out fires and rescuing people trapped in burning buildings, and you're even riding damn minecarts. There's so much variety here, and all of it plays really well. It's not easy though, and most of the levels will take a few tries to get through them. What is good is that you can choose which order you play the levels in, and I always like it when games let you do this. This is a really addictive game, with solid controls, you've got a decent attack and can take a few hits. You can also find healing items that you can use to replenish your health by pressing the select button. This is another nice touch, as it means you can be strategic with when you heal as you don't use them straight away. This is especially useful against bosses, which can be damn tough. The music here is classic Konami and sounds great, it gets you pumping all the way through and it wouldn't sound out of place in a Contra game. This is a really fun title and I had no idea about it before playing it for this video. 
If you're after a new game to try out for the NES, then I definitely recommend giving this one a go. Over to the Super Nintendo now for the Ninja Warriors. This is a 2D beat em up where you choose from one of three ninjas who also happen to be robots for some reason, and you have to set out to defeat an evil robot dwarf man who has taken over mindless humans in order to do his bidding. As the three robot ninjas, you side scroll your way through some fairly large levels, kicking the crap out of anyone and anything that gets in your way. As you'd expect, the three characters all play differently. You've got the imaginatively named Ninja, who is your slow but strong guy. He also can't jump, but does have a rocket boost to speed towards enemies. Then there's Konoichi, the sexy lady robot, who is your all-rounder, so she's got good speed and attack power. Then there's Kamaitichi, who is very fast but weaker. All the characters are actually really fun to play as, as they have a surprising amount of attacks at their disposal by using different combinations of attack buttons and pressing different directions on the D-pad. What's cool here is that you have a blaster bar at the bottom of the screen. This is constantly filling up as long as you're not being knocked to the ground. When it's full, you can do a really powerful screen clearing attack that looks really cool, but it doesn't cost you any health or anything. You can use this attack as many times as you want in each level, you just need to wait for your bar to charge, though this isn't as easy as it sounds as there's always enemies coming for you and it's not always easy to not take a hit. The graphics here are fantastic, with some really great looking characters, including the enemies which are very varied with the usual grunts as well as enemies with guns, robots and all sorts of crazy huge bosses. The animation is fantastic and it really looks like an arcade game. Also, the levels have loads going on in them, with explosions and other things always happening to keep the action intense. When I first started playing this, I was surprised that it wasn't a beat em up like Streets of Rage or Final Fight, which allow you to move up or down. Here, the game is strictly 2D, but it still works really well. As you're smashing people in the face, you'll also find things to pick up, from boxes to motorbikes. These can be thrown at enemies to kill them and sometimes contain health power-ups which is handy. You tend to get 2 or 3 per level which does keep everything a fair challenge. The only downside I would say to this game is that it's only single player and would have been so much fun as a 2 player co-op game. But other than that, Ninja Warriors is a fantastic action platform game that I would highly recommend everyone adds to their collection. Oh, okay, maybe not. And finally for today, here is Shien's Revenge, also for the Super Nintendo. Man, I didn't mean for this to be so Nintendo heavy. I guess the only Ninja games on Sega consoles are Shinobi ones. Anyway, Shien's Revenge is a very different type of game, as it's basically a first person arcade shooter in the same style of T2 the arcade game and Dynamite Duke. You play as Shien, and guess what? He's out to get revenge, because his missus has been kidnapped. Bloody women. Thankfully, you are a ninja, and you have pockets full of ninja stars to throw at enemies. You also have a ninja dagger thing that you can use to attack enemies at close range. Now, the gameplay here is very simple. You've got a cursor and the disembodied arm of Shien on screen, and the game constantly scrolls to the right. You just have to point your cursor at enemies and press the attack button to throw ninja stars. If anyone gets too close to you, you have a slash attack that you can use by swiping your cursor across the enemy. This is pretty cool but hard to get used to. You can also use this slash move to deflect enemy projectiles, and this is vital to do as the game is hard as balls. It took me forever to get past the first level, but once I did get used to how it played, I managed to get quite far and actually really enjoyed it. You can use the shoulder buttons to speed your cursor, so getting around the screen is fine. And what's even better, but not for me, is that you can use the Super Nintendo mouse to control the game, which I only found out about after recording footage. But it's definitely the way to go, as it makes it so much easier to control, and it's perfect for a game like this. You can also collect scrolls here, which gives you screen clearing attacks, killing everything but bosses in one hit. There's also health power-ups and invincibility, but these are few and far between, adding to the challenge. The levels are nice and varied, as for some reason you travel to all kinds of different time periods, but this is actually a really great way to help keep things fresh and introduce loads of wacky enemies that aren't just other ninjas. I really like the graphics here, and could easily picture this one standing out in arcades if it ever came out. The characters are all big and bright, and the bosses look great. Some of the stage effects are really cool too, like the water in the third level. 
It's a very simple game, as it's basically a case of point at the thing and click the button. We've all played games like this, it's a rail shooter. But it's a fun one, with some cool mechanics. Yes, it is hard as nails, but stick with it, and if you can use the SNES mouse if possible, or in my case a USB mouse, then you'll definitely have a good time. So there you go, a bunch of games where you get to be a badass ninja. So what are some of your favourite ninja games? Let me know in the comments below as I'm sure this topic will come up again at some point. On screen now you can see where you can follow me, so please do, I've got loads of cool content for everyone to enjoy. Now all that's left for me to say is thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time.